Hello, everyone. I can see people joining us. Sorry, we're a couple of minutes late. Good afternoon, everyone. I can see people ticking in, which is good. Slowly but surely. Sorry, we're a couple of minutes late. But good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, wherever you are. It's just ticked into the afternoon for us here uh, in the UK. Just while we wait for people to join us, we always do um, just a little check on the systems to check that I've set everything up okay. Um, if you want to let us know in the Q&A or the chat function um, where you're joining us from, it's always nice uh, to uh, see where you are and checks it, uh, tells us it's all working as well. So let us know. Oh, Ben's in the States. So good morning <laughs> to you. So depending on where you are, will depend how early it is. I hope it's not too early for you, but we try to keep these um, uh, yeah. sessions in the middle of the day. Even the Eastern Seaboard will be seven in the morning. So, <laughs> um, so commitment. <laughs> indeed. Hiya, Jerome, in Johannesburg. Just great. I'll just give it a couple more minutes. How's the uh, how's the tech looking, Bernard? Try to show right now. Something just crashed. to have a look, see if it works. Okay. Yeah, let me do um, that. Nesta's in Trinidad, Trinidad Tobago. Oh, how lovely. I wish I was there. <laughs> um, Camel Pat's in uh, Bangkok, which is great. I was very lucky enough to be in Bangkok um, before Christmas meeting students, uh, which was brilliant. It was my first time in Thailand, so I was very pleased to be there. Okay, Zoom's gone all big for me, so I can't get out of it. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll have a few more tick in. Uh, you're not on full screen yet, Bernard, just in case. Okay, not... well, the only question is whether I can get into, um, well, the bit on, I won't see the chat if I started. That's it. okay, I can, I'll monitor the chat for you anyway. So... So we'll start now. I'll do. Um, I can see a couple more people coming in. So I'll we'll we'll make a start, and I'll do an introduction, and I'll I'll pass over to you, Bernard, to take it away. So, um, sure. hello, um, everyone. <laughs> um, my name's Charlotte Burton. You may have met me or seen me before um, at various webinars that we do um, for uh, the Centre for Commercial Law Studies. And um, today we're doing a specific session on tax law or international tax law, um, which uh, many of you. Um, might have already applied for um, or just inquired that you're interested in studying that with us um, at CCLS. Um, so I've got uh, my colleague um, Bernard here for you, um, who I will let, allow to introduce himself in a moment. Um, but just before we start, just to say that if you've got any questions uh, that you would like to ask, uh, please feel free to use the Q&A or the chat function. It all seems to be working OK. Um, as we go along, if you have questions, if there's anything very specific, um, I will answer that as we go along. Uh, but if there's anything that's more broader or it's um, uh, would be beneficial for everyone to hear the answer to, um, I might save that to the end where we can have time for questions. So please do not worry if you don't have an answer back straight away. It might just be because I'm holding on to it for the end for everyone else. OK, so uh, without further ado, um, Bernard, over to you. I can see a few more people coming in. So uh, good timing to start. Good. Sounds good. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Charlotte, for the introduction and, and even more, more important for, uh, for organizing all of this uh, for us. So my name is Bernard Schneider. I am the uh, head of the tax program. Uh, and I'm actually head of the LLM program and head of the Institute of Tax Law, which I'll mention again 
uh, briefly uh, uh, a little bit later. Um, and I want to give you a bit of an introduction to CCLS uh, and the postgraduate law program in general, and then, of course, uh, especially about the, the tax program uh, that we have. Um, uh, you know, so you get the, the general context uh, and and the tax program in particular, and you'll you'll see that it's more than just context because of the way it, uh, we have things set up at CCLS and at QM. So um, the postgraduate program is uh, administered out of the Center for Commercial Law Studies um, in uh, just outside Lincoln's Inn Fields. For those of you who are familiar with London, it's uh, near what is often referred to as legal London, so near the Inns of Court, uh, which is the barristers uh, and their uh, institutions. It's near the Court of Justice, the Royal Court of Justice. Uh, the Justice, unsurprisingly, uh, those two come together. A lot of the main uh, solicitors, uh, law firms uh, are also in that area. So it's very much the heart of legal London. Um, uh, just by Holborn. It's also in many ways the heart of London, so we're not that far from Trafalgar Square and Leicester Square and, and all those things that I always uh, joke that you should enjoy while you're in London, but not enjoy too much um, because you do have to spend or you should be spending at least some time uh, uh, studying, uh, you know, reviewing, reading and, and all the rest of it. Um, uh, and most of the teaching uh, also takes place at CCLS at Holborn, uh, although there is uh, there are some modules that are held either at Myland, the main campus, uh, or um, in one of our other campuses. The Queen Mary is a very large university, and we have several campuses. Um, okay, so more broad. So in general, uh, the the law programs. So this is actually, uh, to be honest, these are the undergraduate and postgraduate programs together are ranked very highly. Um, I won't bore you um, with these statistics because you can, I'll just leave them up long enough for you to, to be able to take a look. Um, but the point is, uh, the, the, the broader point uh, is that we are very rankly, highly ranked both in the UK and internationally for law. Um, by a range of different uh, uh, metrics, if you will. Academics love this word metrics, right? So if you look at different polling, you know, sort of different ranking uh, uh, groups, both QS, so QS, the Guardian League tables, which are quite large here in the UK, you have Times Higher Education, they have a world university ranking. Um, and also there is a, something called the research uh, uh, exercise framework, which is an evaluation of research, the research side of, of various institu academic institutions in the UK. But all of those measures, uh, and these are invariably pretty much like the most recent ones, but we could go, we could give you statistics going back. So we are consistently ranked very highly. Um, and the, the last statistic is not a ranking statistic, but it it, it is kind of, I suppose, an informal one we have a huge number of links with, with the legal sector, if you will, uh, um, uh, the legal profession, uh, in, both in the UK and abroad. Um, and the legal profession, at, at least in this country, is broken up into several pieces, barristers, solicitors, uh, and so on. And we have strong links, uh, I would say, with large parts of all of those sectors. So it's a, it's a very well-regarded uh, undergraduate and postgraduate for, for your purposes, more importantly, postgraduate uh, program, both uh, and uh, even on the postgraduate, we're, we're going to talk primarily about the top program, the LLM program. Um, but actually, this is true for the postgraduate research, the PhD programs um, as well. So that's just a little bit. So you've had time to take a look at those uh, at those stats a bit as I've as I've been speaking, but you can you can Google this. And I said, as I've said, you can Google this going back a few years uh, or many years as long as you want. We are you know we've been consistently for quite some time um, well ranked. Um, thinking uh, in in particular about the postgraduate taught programs. We have a, and this is true for tax as well, I'll talk about our tax team uh, a bit more later, but we have a, a very, um, you know, we have a good, very strong uh, academic faculty. We have experts 
uh, in all sorts of different areas, there are more than 20 um, uh, specialisms, as we call them here at, uh, at CCLS in the uh, LLM programs and a few non-LLM, few masters non-LLM programs. Um, and we are in many cases the leading or at least one of the leading pro programs in the world uh, and certainly in the UK and Europe uh, in these areas. Um, our academics are typically active researchers. They write uh, um, academic pieces, scholarship pieces, professional practice pieces, um, and uh, are therefore unsurprisingly uh, among the, I, I hate the cliche, thought leadership, um, but many of us, I dare say, really are thought leaders uh, in our particular areas. Um, and we bring that into the classroom, or at least speaking for myself, I know we, uh, I try, and I think many of us try to bring our uh, research uh, and other scholarship activities into class, um, bringing in guest lecturers, keeping up to date with uh, development. Certainly, uh, those of you who've done any tax or follow tax at all, you'll know it's always changing. Uh, if you don't keep up with things, if you don't keep up with the latest policy developments, the latest research, the latest scholarship, you will fall behind very, very quickly. Um, and we certainly try not to do that. That's not the idea, right? So it's very much what they call uh, research-led teaching. Um, it does not hurt at all that we have um, uh, academics from I will say quite all over the world, but from quite a range of countries. Uh, those of you who know something about English accents will know that my uh, English language accents will know that my accent is not English. I'm North American. We have Europeans. We have, of course, Brits. We have Latin Americans um, uh, in, in the faculty and, and also people from, from Asia um, uh, and so on. So we have quite a range, civil law jurisdictions, common law jurisdictions, um, uh, some who are non-lawyers or not just lawyers are also trained in other disciplines, political science, economics, finance, and so on. Um, and we bring all of that, I think it's fair to say, uh, you know, naturally to our teaching, right? So you will get across the, uh, the range of modules quite a uh, broad range of teaching styles and experience and expertise. Um, and that's true also uh, for the student body. I think one of the great things about CCLS in general um, and the uh, tax program uh, as well as you get students from a, a wide range of jurisdictions. We have typically, I think this year we have, uh, I'm sure at CCLS in general, uh, and I think even uh, just in the tax program, we have every continent except Antarctica represented. Okay. Um, so that gives you a, an idea of, of what we've got. We've got obviously the UK and Europe, but we've got Central Asia, uh, we've got uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, um, Latin America, North America, right? So you, you really get quite, quite the range of students. Um, and these will be your, you know, these will be your cohort uh, and your, you know, your future fellow alums, right? So it's not just about learning from them in the class and hearing their questions and their perspectives, but also about who you will um, you know, hopefully keep in touch with after you graduate uh, as you as you uh, build or further develop your, you know, your personal and professional networks. As I've already mentioned, and as, as no doubt you know, we're in the heart of legal London, right? So near the major law firms and so on. Um, but we have the advantage of, of having not only our building and our location, but also QM's facilities in Mile End, uh, including its library, the, you also have access to University of London facilities and also the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, <clears throat> which is a, a nice building in Russell Square, not far away um, from Holborn, um, and perhaps most importantly, from that point of view, their library. So you have quite a bit of um, resource behind you, right? So you have, to some extent, the best, uh, I would argue, the best of both worlds. You're in Holborn in the heart of legal London, but you also have QM. Uh, uh, backing you up, so to speak. Now, the LLM uh, program in particular, uh, so it's 180 credits. That is roughly something like 90 credits for those of you who are familiar with the European system. Uh, so it doesn't mean you do two, twice as much work. It's roughly equivalent. Uh, the way we divide it up is that uh, if you go into a specialism like tax, you must take at least 120 credits within the specialism and you are allowed to take 
uh, up to 60 credits outside the specialism. I'm uh, very happy, uh, maybe even proud to say that a lot of our tax students take all or almost all of their uh, um, 180 credits with us. Um, that's because we're a great program. We have a lot of options and we'll talk, I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. Um, but uh, it's also, but it's, it's a nice thing to have because uh, as, as an option for, for you as students at CCLS, because we have something, well, we have about 200 modules. Um, not every module, I mean, to be honest, not every module runs every year, um, but the, the majority uh, do, which means, and you can take up to 60 credits uh, of your 180 outside the specialism. Uh, I've seen your hand, Felipe, but if you give me a minute, well, let me at least finish the slide and then we'll, we'll see if it's uh, better to be addressed now or later. Um, um, so uh, modules are 15 or 30 credits, and this gives you the option of taking a few uh, modules uh, if you want you know, in one of our many other uh, strong areas. So tax is very strong uh, uh, at CCLS, but to be honest, so is banking and finance, so is arbitration, so is intellectual property. Um, actually, we don't have any weak areas, just some of them are, are bigger than others. Uh, but in general, whatever we do, we do well. Uh, and if you're interested in, I don't know, taxation and shipping, well, we've got good shipping modules, right? So you can you can do that kind of crossover. Um, so it's a nice uh, 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 option to have. Many students take advantage of it, but again, you don't have to. Within that 180 credits is an optional dissertation. So you can choose to write a 10,000 word uh, dissertation. This can be a very good choice depending on what your interests are, but also in, not just in terms of topics, but also in terms of professionally where you want to go. Uh, we can talk about that perhaps uh, a bit more. Um, so you, in, in that case, so you would take 150 credits of top module, you know, top module credits, and then the, the 30 credit dissertation. Um, so let's talk, let's, so let's talk now. Okay. So this, I've, I've really sort of addressed uh, this question of module, uh, module choice. So, um, this is, this, uh, slide is just some of our, um, uh, research institutes. So in, in our case for taxation, we have an institute of tax law. It is involved in the provision of the tax LLMs, um, but it also supervises. So it is through the tax, the institute of tax law that we have various research uh, and other uh, um, events. Also the PhD program, we have a small strong but small or small but strong PhD program. That too is run out of the Institute of Tax Law and we coordinate uh, some of our research through there. Again, in part, I mean, there are many reasons to do research uh, in academia, but one of them certainly at CCLS is to, uh, as I said, to, to uh, enable research-led teaching. I think it's fair to say, certainly for tax, but I think across the board at CCLS that you will, you will get, you will be getting the latest or, you know, sort of developments um, in, in whatever is going on in that particular area of, of the law. So this is some, but not all of our research institutes, right? There, there is more, uh, there are more. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the LLM program. So uh, um, you should be aware that strictly speaking, there are two LLM programs for tax for historical and administrative uh, reasons that will not be a, a um, should not be much of a concern for most of you. There is an LLM in international tax law and there's an LLM in tax law. Um, some students prefer to graduate with one or the other, depending on their career plans. It's also true that in one or two jurisdictions, Thailand in particular comes to mind uh, for certain purposes, it matters uh, because one of them has been approved already, is accredited effectively domestically, and 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 the the newer one, the international tax law LLM, is not. Um, but as a as a practical matter, as a substantive matter, there is you know it's run. They are run as one program. You have the access to the same modules, the same academics, um, the same you know the same events and so on and so forth. We also run, just so that you know, uh, a postgraduate diploma, which is 120 credits and a postgraduate certificate, which is 60. Um, you will all hopefully come for the 
uh, come to us and come for the LLM, but you should just be aware if any friends ask you or whatever it is that we do also offer uh, um, uh, shorter programs as well. We have the biggest LLM program and, and from here on in, I'm going to talk about the two programs as one, because again, functionally and effectively, they are one program. Um, we run the biggest tax LLM program in the UK, and that's true by number of students. It's also true by number of modules offered. I think it's fair to say that it's also true by range of modules offered in terms of what we offer. Um, we have, I think, one of the best LLM programs in the world. I, I'm I'm hesitant there to say the best because that's a big claim to make, and also it becomes very hard to make that claim across jurisdictions. But I, I think it is uh, safe uh, for me to say that we have one of the best programs um, in the world. Uh, and again, against the backdrop of of one of the best LLM programs in general, with the range of modules, with being in London, with all the advantages that that CCLS and QM can offer uh, more broadly. Um, we have uh, four, uh, well, five, four primary academics plus one uh, uh, who assists us. We are all active in, in the profession uh, and or in research. Uh, and again, that comes through in, in the teaching. Um, we've had a lot of uh, uh, change, as some of you may know, in the last 10, 15 years in, in, in the world of tax, so to speak. Um, which has been uh, a bit of a challenge in terms of teaching because we've had to continually uh, adjust what we do and how we do it, how we present things. I mean, you know, 10 years ago, some of you, you know, uh, probably come into this since, so you, you don't know the world before, so to speak. But when I was in law school, there was no OECD devs, right? And then 10, 12 years ago, this thing starts to explode on us. And it affects not only our understanding of taxation and where international tax is headed, but also how we teach and what we teach, right? So we are on top of this. We have to be on top of this to keep a, a, a quality uh, program. And I think we, we do do that. We certainly strive to do that. Um, as I mentioned, we have a, a, a strong, a small, but very high quality PhD program. It doesn't probably affect you that much directly, to be honest, um, except to the extent that you may see some of these, you know, you may get a, a, a presentations uh, or you may have the uh, ability or you, you may be able to access presentations from some of these PhD students and sometimes they help with the LLM program, but they are also part of this research culture and this keeping on top of things and keeping up with things that uh, permeates uh, the tax program. Um, and another aspect of, of research that you will also see, at least indirectly, we have visiting scholars, visiting researchers. When they come, they often present to everybody, and the students are welcome to, to come to that. And that, again, by the nature of the thing, is going to be cutting-edge stuff, right? So, so uh, I think we offer, uh, in the round, a very good range of subjects, not only in the modules themselves, but in the, around the modules in terms of events and so on. We are, perforce, by necessity and by desire, very strongly international and comparative. Um, of our four and a half, five people, three of us are not British, right? I'm being, I myself being one of them. Um, uh, and the student body is even more. Uh, and, and those two were both, uh, the two Brits were both in, heavily involved in international tax when, you know, before becoming before starting or, or moving to CCLS. Um, and the student body, again, is very international. Uh, it's about 90% non-British. It varies by year, but it's something like that. Um, from, again, a range of jurisdictions and literally continents, civil law, common law, everything in between, uh, all the sort of mixed co combinations that you can think of. Um, so we are very international. We're very comparative. It comes naturally to us. Um, and it's one of the great things I think about the, you know, the classroom and the discussions we have after class and all this sort of things. And I pick up, I learn stuff from students and, uh, you know, I love teaching at CCLS uh, because we have great students and they come with very uh, interesting and, and often very, very different perspectives that I then uh, learn from. We are not just a technical program. You will not just learn the tax rules and how they work. Um, 
We know it's necessary. We know it's important. We also know you can do it. Um, to some extent, what you get, uh, the, 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 the extra that you get, I think, is that uh, if you want to think of it that way or put it that way, is what's behind that. What the tax policy is, how systems really work, not just, you know, black letter law, but law in action, if you're if you're familiar with those expressions, um, you know, what's really going on, the, the why and the how and not just the technical what, um, precisely the stuff that one often does not have the opportunity to get in practice. I was a practitioner for about 10 years before becoming an academic, and I can tell you, we never had time to think about that. Um, I find it fascinating, but but perhaps more importantly, from your perspective, if you understand the why, the technical rules will make sense. And if you don't, it's a lot harder and arguably a lot less interesting, right? Because it tax, as as some of you I'm sure know uh, know only too well, can get very technical very very quickly, right? And it's quite possible to lose oneself, uh, you know, and to get lost uh, in the rules. But if you have that context and that background, then then to my mind, at least in my experience, that, uh, you know, the rest of it then falls into place. We typically have, I've sort of said this, but it's true for tax. Typically, we have about 20, 20 plus jurisdictions represented. The exact jurisdictions, some of them are pretty constant every year, including one or two that I've heard mentioned when uh, Charlotte was, uh, was uh, sort of uh, asking you where some some of you are from, uh, and some we get maybe once every two or three years. Um, so, but that's also part of you know part of the strength of the program, right? So you'll get different perspectives uh, uh, and different understandings of what law and tax law look like, um, because it's not always, you know, what you think is natural is not always natural, um, and it's not always the only. It's often not the only way to do things. Um, and again, these, this, this is your cohort. This will be your cohort. These will be your hopefully future friends, your professional contacts and so on and so forth. So we have, uh, this is the current setup. It typically looks like this. We have the 30 and 15 credit modules. So, uh, uh as you may have seen on online or, or elsewhere. So 30 credits are one term modules, 15 credit are half term. This is our, uh, uh, layout currently with the 30 and 15 credit uh, modules in the autumn and spring terms. The summer term has only 15 credit top modules, uh, tax and technology and UK tax avoidance specifically. Um, technically, the third, if you do a dissertation, which is elective, uh, then that is technically a summer term module, but the reality is don't, you know, don't wait till May, please, right? So, uh, um, you know, you start earlier um, than that. Uh, but that's the layout and you sort of divide it depending on how you want and and but also keeping in mind uh, uh, balance so that you don't go too crazy one term and have it too easy another term. Um, a very brief uh, uh, introduction to some of our modules. It's not all of them. So probably the flagship modules. We have no um, required modules, right? So just to be clear, you can take what you want. Uh, and we have more than enough to offer. Uh, we have a, a considerably more than 180 credits. So you can, and as I said, some do indeed do only tax modules. Um, but probably the closest thing we have to a, a, a compulsory or required course uh, a module is is international tax law, or for some students, international tax law and, and international tax law in practice as a as a sort of sequence. Um, and it's pretty much what 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 you would imagine and what the uh, description says. We talk about key concepts in international tax law, primarily from a corporate perspective, from an M&E perspective. Um, and when we say international, to a large extent, we mean OECD level, supranational slash bilateral, right? So OECD, BEPS, uh, tax treaties, UN to a lesser extent, uh, and so on. Um, as opposed to a, a focus primarily on the domestic jurisdictions. We do that in other modules. Those are very, well, you know, almost everybody takes that, although, again, you don't have to. If you have that experience, you know, we don't require it precisely because there are some students for whom it's less relevant or because they've already done it uh, or they feel that they have enough of that. 
um, enough background in those areas. We offer a tech system design and policy in emerging and developing economies. That's one of my modules. We often co-teach. So I sometimes teach on international tax law, but then there are modules we take primary responsibility for. Tax system design uh, is one of, one of mine, so to speak. Um, and we offer uh, in this module something that very few law schools and certainly nobody in the UK, and I don't think in, in Europe either, uh, offers, which is a discussion of tax of a range of tax issues, specifically from the perspective of what I like to refer to in this context as the rest of the world. So not the OECD, not the most developed countries, but the you know, not those 40, 50 or so countries, but the other 140 countries. Um, uh, it's an important perspective. It's an, a perspective that, if anything, is becoming more and more important uh, with every year. Um, and it's also one that is, uh, as, I, as I've suggested, I think relatively undertaught uh, and relatively under uh, under analyzed and under understood, if, if I can put it that way. We offer transfer pricing. This is, a, as I'm sure many of you know, this is a major area of taxation. If anything, it's becoming uh, more important as, as countries scramble uh, for tax revenue. Um, and given that about three quarters of the world's trade uh, or something like that, anyhow, according to the statistics I've seen, uh, by value, in, not by number of transactions, but by value is intra-group trade. Um, how that's priced and valued and taxed is of huge importance to many, many jurisdictions. And that's what we do for a term in TP. Um, we have U.S. international taxation. Uh, again, one of mine, if I can, if I can put it that way, and we talk about the the U.S. cross border regime for individuals and and corporations, entities, but primarily corporations. Um, again, this is something that is, un I can't say nobody teaches this, but not many places teach it outside of the U.S. That I can say, uh, and certainly not as a full module, as opposed to flying someone in for a week. To give an executive, you know, executive course type of thing. We offer EU tax law, uh, again in this case with a corporate tax focus and a, and a direct tax focus. Um, we have uh, so obviously very important, particularly if you're going to do business or your uh, expected clients or your law firm or or, or whoever is dealing with uh, EU companies and EU clients, uh, inbound or outbound. Um, we offer tax administration and procedure. Um, again, unusual uh, uh, offering in, in the law school context, uh, probably in any context. Um, and we look at organization and operation of tax administrations, both in principle and also what it means for taxpayers, which is to say what it means for uh, your future clients. Uh, or some of you may be in revenue authorities. Every year we get students, uh, this year we have about Actually, quite a few this year. We have a, uh, we have nine uh, this year who are from revenue authorities, right? So understanding how government, uh, uh, the government side of taxation works, either because you're in government or you may want to be uh, go into government, or from a general policy point of view, or because you're going to have to deal with them because you're representing clients who are going to have to deal with them. Uh, uh, so that's a, I think, a very strong uh, and again fairly unusual, quite unusual module. Uh, one of the other uh, very exciting modules we have, and this is perhaps uh, uh, one of the ones that's in the most flux, uh, as you can imagine, is tax and technology. Um, and uh, in this module, we cover uh, things like crypto assets, cryptocurrencies, the uh, effects of AI and blockchain uh, on on the economy. Uh, or rather on, on the taxation, right, as the economy digitalizes, but also increasingly on what that may mean for tax administration and procedure, uh, something we also talk about in tax administration and procedure itself, right? So these things, if stuff moves to the blockchain, then compliance also has to move to the blockchain um, and so on. So there's a lot uh, there's a lot of change going on in, in tax, both tech-driven both tech -driven, um, and not. So that's not all of our modules, but that's, you know, uh, well, that's some of them, and that's a, a hopefully a taste uh, of of the kinds of things we offer, and and why I say that we're really we try to be as much as possible on top of things and on top of change, because it's a very 
dynamic area of the law. Um, and that's what's fun about it, I think, actually. And that's what also, by the way, gives you career opportunities. It was not huge 20 years ago. Uh, tech is going to appear more and more uh, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot uh, there's a lot to do in tax. Um, I know we've got time issue or the, rather there's always we want to leave time for, for questions and so on. So I'll try to go through the, the remaining uh, uh, slides uh, relatively quickly. So there is an elective dissertation. It can make a lot. Some students take it um, and many do not by definition. Uh, it's 30 credits. So it's the equivalent of a full term of work in terms of um, uh, you know, how it weighs into the, the marks for the program. Uh, it is, uh, well, some people like to do this kind of research, some less so, uh, of course. So it's partially a question of, of, of taste, so to speak. Uh, but it also depends. If you want to do policy or become an academic or work in government, then it is very, very helpful to be able to say, listen, I wrote a 10, 11,000 word paper on this subject. Uh, I know something about this. I can talk about it in an interview um, and so on and so forth. So it, it's a quite a popular um, option, uh, so to speak. Um, we have, uh, maybe before we get to this, I'll just say briefly. So we have, as I suggested, we have five people basically who, who teach on tax. So it's a relatively large group. Um, we have a mix of former private uh, uh, practice people like myself. We have a former government person. Um, I'm a lawyer by training. Uh, the government person is also a lawyer by training. One of us is an accountant. One, uh, the two, and two of us basically are lawyers, but but didn't practice so much. So we have a, a pretty broad range covered in terms of experience, um, which matches, I would I dare say, roughly the 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 student body. Because again, we have a mix of people. Uh, more or less straight out of the LLB, extensive experience, less experience, government officials, hoping to go to government, planning to go to international organizations and so on. And we try to teach to all of that, all right? So, we, you know, so that nobody, you know, everybody gets hopefully good, good stuff out of the program. Um, so that's a, a little bit more in terms of us. Uh, here we've got some uh, useful links, very helpfully prepared uh, by Charlotte. Thank you. Um, and then, um, so you can always contact uh, me, uh, certainly with reference to the tax program in particular, although uh, uh, I'm not sure, I, me I don't think I mentioned, um, I'm also the director of education. So I, I have a sort of CCLS or postgraduate taught wide role. So I, I'm actually pretty familiar with the, the LLM in general. Um, we also have a director for the LLM program, uh, Professor Flanagan, uh, and is very helpful uh, um, and very knowledgeable. Uh, and, she, you know, there's always, uh, you know, she she's, can always ask questions. And we have a postgraduate uh, law office, which deals especially with the sort of the more administrative and technical side uh, of things. So uh, I think that's probably for the moment enough for me. Um, uh, so perhaps if uh, I stop sharing and then if there are questions, I'm happy to. Lovely. Thank you so Thanks, much. Everybody. I feel like I've learned a lot about tax as well, which is always helpful uh, to know more about the programmes. Um, you've obviously done a very good job at explaining everything very well, Bernard, because there's a, we haven't had any questions so far. Um, but I'm sure there will be. I know we've got a mixture of students that are uh, students that are offer holders um, that are here that uh, have offers to come and join us in September and those that are inquiring as well. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to just pop them in the chat on the Q&A. We're here uh, if you have any questions. Um, something that I was just interested in, um, Bernard, how long have you worked for CCLS? How long have you been teaching? So I've been at CCLS for about 10 years. Yeah. Uh, but I actually did my PhD at CCLS. Oh. Uh, so it's it's actually a bit uh, a bit longer. <laughs> it, it it's about fifteen. Um, uh, it it feels like I've been there forever, and it, mostly in a good way. Um, yeah. But yes, I've been I've been at uh, CCLS for ten plus, and I was as I as I mentioned briefly a, a practitioner uh, for about ten years before I decided to go do the PhD. Oh, fabulous! I definitely have a, a a mixed background in that regard. Yeah. I'm just looking. I um. 
Here we go. It looks like I'm a, well, let me just see what how much I'm trying to figure out how much battery I've got. Um if, in case I need to move. Uh, uh no, I should be okay. I should be fine. Good. So, uh, okay, Pay sorry. Said, go ahead, please. There so was Felipe a said the yeah. international tax law LLM. Uh, is it suitable for, for beginners in tax? I am a lawyer, but I haven't practiced much in the field. Yeah. So, no, it's a very good and very fair question, um, which I was trying to implicitly uh, um, uh, address a, a few minutes ago, which is that we have a broad range. Uh, we have students who are basically out of an LLB. We have students who are already uh, uh, qualified lawyers or occasionally tax. Uh, well, if they are accountants, then they have to be tax accountants. So in that case, they already have tax experience, but perhaps non legal. But we definitely have lawyers who have not done tax before who want to switch into uh, tax or are thinking about switching into tax, um, and that's fine. Uh, we are well. I mean, one of the very interesting, and I, I have to admit, the sometimes challenging things about teaching at CCLS is precisely this range of students. Uh, in terms of not just your jurisdictional backgrounds, but also your professional background and experience. Um, now, so I didn't mention principles of taxation, but principles of taxation is a 15 credit module. I mean, it's on the, the slide with all the modules, but I, I didn't really speak to it uh, directly, but it's a module that is specifically designed for people who have little or no background in tax, hence the name, you know, hence the module title. Um, uh, so that's an example of how we try to, you know, cater to everybody, uh, and all sort of a wide range of, of backgrounds and experience. Um, but I think it's fair to say that we are generally, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, you know, we're, we're pretty open. We're pretty flexible. If you have a question, you raise your hand, you go, Bernard, um, what did you mean by X? Right. Cause sometimes I use the term assuming, that uh, that uh, everyone's going to know what I'm talking about, and sometimes it's not a fair assumption, or it's a fair assumption for half the class, but not you know, or most of the class, but not for everyone. So you should feel free, and I think our students do typically feel very free, in basically stopping us and saying or coming after class and saying, you know, what, what was that? You know, can you explain that some more? So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, I think it'd be fine. It'd be more than fine. <laughs> Good to hear. Actually, two very similar questions. So asking mm -hmm. about if uh, lectures are hosted uh, in person um, or online as well. OK, so um, the, the short answer is generally only in person. Uh, under specific circumstances, either for an individual or one, one day we had a strike last year. There was a, a tube strike, an underground strike. So we had to move things online. But the general answer is, uh, um, is that it's, it's normally only in person. Um, I know people have different preferences. Uh, and I know it can, it, you know, the logistics matter in terms of uh, um, being able to come to London or being able to come in. But I have to tell you, having, having done uh, online only and hybrid, uh, um, or mixed mode, as I sometimes referred to, as well as in-person only, that generally speaking, the in-person, for most people, the in-person experience is by far the best. Not only because you get an interaction in the classroom that is difficult, very difficult, uh, I can tell you, uh, as an academic or as a teacher, uh, uh, to replicate um, even hybrid and definitely online only is very hard to replicate, um, but also because you don't get that same interaction with your fellow students. Uh, and I'm quite serious when I say that, uh, and I've heard this from students, and I remember actually when I was an LLM student many years ago, that, you know, part of the, the great thing about this program is you have that you know, what they used to call water cooler chat, you know, you sort of talk informally with someone in the 10 minute break in the middle of the lecture or after class, or you go out to lunch with them and so on. And that uh, that's something we want to foster uh, and encourage as much as possible. And the more you put that things online, the less you get of that. So that's that's what it is. But that's also the thinking behind it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, someone's I, 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 Go Sorry, on. actually, let me just, uh, one other thought comes to mind. You should, just so you know, lectures, generally speaking, are recorded. Now, I am I say that always with a little bit of hesitation because I, I do not think that's a substitute for attendance. Um, and also because under the requirements of most people's visa, 
attendance and is part of engagement with the program to demonstrate that you're actually, you know, without getting technical about visa requirements. Um, but it is there, I would say, primarily as a review mechanism. So that aspect of, of the online experience we have largely kept. Some, some lectures are not if it's a sort of off the record or so on, but generally speaking, lectures are recorded. So to that extent, you know, arguably you have one of the good bits of online still preserved. Sorry, Charlotte, please go ahead. No, no problem. It's a, it's a good point um, to make, actually. And I think it's also worth saying that um, if there is some sort of extenuating circumstances to yeah. why you can't get to the lecture, like you, there's some sort of family emergency or something or reason that you need to travel home, um, recordings are made available to you then. So you are excused for um, particular reasons. Yeah. But you're expected yeah. to be in class um, for the majority of the time, if not all. Yeah. yeah. Ideally, all. I think that's the best experience educationally and, and socially. Yeah. No, but but Charlotte, of course, is completely correct. Um. So someone's asked about um. Availability of books to be referred to in the library and QM. So there's a variety of library options that you yes. have available to you that Bernard had mentioned. So you've got the Queen Mary, um, main library on the Mile End campus, which has just recently been um had two additional floors added to it. So it's absolutely mm. fabulous. Um, that's obviously on our Mile End campus. So it's um, over in uh, more east side of London rather than Lincoln Fields. But I know that the students use um, the Institute of Advanced Legal Studies library yes. quite regularly. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if there's particular books that you recommend. I'm sure there is, Bernard. <laughs> uh, well, th there certainly are. If, 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 if it's a specific question about an area of tax, I'm, I'm happy to take that. Uh, offline, so to speak, feel free to email me. Um, more broadly, I would say that, yes, I mean, we have either through QM uh, and actually the more, to be honest, the more important, I mean, the, the, as Charlotte says, the Myland library has been, has been, you know, sort of, uh, uh, I won't say refurbished because didn't do refurbishing, but it's been expanded and modernized and so on. It's a, it's a great place to work. Um, but to be honest, the most important resources are, uh, or the, the majority of the most important resources are actually electronic. Uh, so you can sit at home and, you know, in your room and, and access them. And they are, uh, uh, so, you know, QM is very strong in that regard, certainly on the legal side, in terms of what we provide. Um, and then there is IALS, which has its own materials. Um, uh, some of which we don't offer, plus some books that we haven't got. And for those of you who are primarily at uh, Holborn, it's much closer. Um, so, uh, and we we are careful, at least I know I'm careful, to, to make sure that if I assign something, that it's either public access, which a lot of tax stuff actually is, uh, because it's governmental or it's OECD or UN or something like that, that is, you know, available generally, uh, or because I make sure that the library has it, ideally both libraries, because we have a we have a relationship with ILS, which means that we can ask them to purchase books, uh, uh, and so on. So so yes, normally you will have access. Now, if there are only two copies in the library and they're on reserve, you may have to you know read them in in chunks or whatever. You you, know, you can always I suppose buy your own books. But again, most of this is electronic now. The majority is electronic, so access should one way or another access should not be a problem perfect um someone's asked about uh so this is a bit about entry requirements so uh -huh. so uh they've said can a government officer who's in the field of taxation eligible for this degree or must i do a bachelor's in law um for an llm we do require students to have had an llb um, um come and study with us however Go However, on. yeah, go for it. <laughs> go for it. No, I'll let you go. You're probably better explaining. <laughs> no, no, you can go ahead. Go, no, sorry, please go ahead. Um, we do make allowances if um you have a certain number of years of experience um where uh, you have experience in the field and you've got a good reason as to why you want to come and study yeah. the LLM, which is why we ask for a CV as part of your um, application. So um, if there's something like that, that will come through to us in the school and we will um, review them as a case by case basis. Yeah. Yeah, no. So I, I so Charlotte said that better than I could have, but I just <laughs> want to emphasize that, that particularly, and this I can say specifically about tax, 
um, we regularly have, as in every year, students who are strong in tax, but you know, who have good experience in tax and are knowledgeable in tax, but who do not have a law degree. So taxes is uh, unlike some of our specialisms, it is quite common for people to, it also depends on the jurisdiction to be fair, but at least in some jurisdictions, it's quite common for people to have, uh, to be in tax as a field without necessarily having done a law degree. Um, so, so we regularly admit uh, um, people who, who fit that profile. Uh, typically, it's about five years of experience. Um, so, it, I mean, just to, as an example, if you come in with a, an accounting degree, but no tax experience, it's not going to happen, probably, okay, to be frank. Um, but if you worked four, five, six, ten years in, in tax, uh, and you had maybe a finance degree uh, or an accounting degree or whatever, um, and that's how you got into tax and then you wound up in practice or uh, uh, one of our, one or two of our government people are in this category right there, very experienced, very knowledgeable in tax, but just not didn't come in through the, the law route, so to speak. That's not, not generally a problem. And Charlotte's right, uh, but that's what we mean by case by case, right? So if you yeah. present, if you have a, a strong uh, a case, so to speak, to, to, to make, then, uh, then they, at least in tax, I can tell you that's not a, that should not be a problem. Perfect, thank you. Um, Mira's asked in the Q and A um, uh -huh. about modules specifically. I guess on certain areas, she's asked about Southeast okay. Asia or India. I know that we do have them in EU. There's a US one as well, isn't there? Um, but she uh -huh. said if not, she would do it in in an optional dissertation. So. Um, Emerging and developing economies, uh, which I mentioned and which I'm actually the convener for, talks about, uh, well, what it suggests. And typically, uh, that means, um, well, it depends to some extent. I mean, so I, I have an agenda, so to speak. There are topics that I want to discuss that need to be discussed, I feel, in the framework of that module. But to be honest, what the, the nitty gritty, so to speak, the, a lot of the specific examples or specific questions are driven by whoever's in the room, which is to say students, um, you guys. And we have Indian, typically Indian students, India is really South Asia, maybe not Southeast, but we have Indian students every year, Chinese, uh, Thai students, um, often others from the region as well. Last year, we had Korean and Japanese. This year, not, to be honest, right? So again, the mix varies a little bit, but you will get... Um, India is a very important jurisdiction, so that's going to come up uh, uh, or can come up, is likely to come up, uh, again, depending in part on the students in any module. But these these kinds of questions will definitely come up in uh, emerging and developing economies, for sure. Right, uh, and if you're thinking specifically of India or Southeast Asia, or for that matter, East Asia, um, absolutely. And yes, you can do it in a dissertation if you want to do it. Or it, it, we didn't really talk about much about assessments except the dissertation. But some of our modules are assessed by exam, uh, and some are assessed by essay. And all of our, at least in tax, all of the essay assessments are chosen by you. So if you want to write about some aspect of the Indian tax system. As long as it fits within the scope of the module, go for it, right? So yes, absolutely. You can, you know, there's a lot of customizing that you can do with this program, not just in terms of the modules that you take, uh, which is sort of the most obvious headline customization, um, but also how you choose to deal with them, right? You can write an essay about India or Thailand or China or Nigeria or whatever it is, right? Uh, or a dissertation for that matter. So. Uh, hopefully that's addressed that 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 question. Perfect. And then we've got two, which I think we can squeeze in at the end, uh, which yeah. are probably uh, quite good questions, actually. So one that kind of links slightly onto what you were just saying is okay. related to the dissertation. So are there any limitations, uh, guardians, parameters on topics for dissertation that students can choose? So... There is no limitation in, except that it has to be within tax, but that's, you know, that's a huge, that's not a limitation really, right? Um, and it could even be because tax is one of these areas that crosses over. It can be tax and shipping, as I said before, 
tax and banking and finance, right? Taxation of investment funds, or I don't know, right? So as long as it's, you know, uh, 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 basically a tax thing, it can be tax and. Um, so that's in, in terms of that, in terms of limitations, in terms of guidance or uh, slash parameters. In terms of guidance, well, the, the way it works basically is that if you want to do a dissertation, you you elect, right? So for tax, at least, is, it's an elective dissertation. You elect, you choose your topic, okay? Um, and then you are allocated a supervisor and you work with him or her to narrow it down, to discuss, you know, major areas. Is the scope too broad? What about this issue? Should I cover that? And you go through a process, which quite frankly is your is is a is is a, a real research process, uh, which is you start off, I want to write about X, and then you discover, you know, this part has already been written, this part is not so interesting to me. Um, this looks really juicy or it's new, or you know, or I thought I would write, you know. So it, that sort of develops uh, uh, over the course of the of the research project. Um, and you have your supervisor to guide you, and you know it, it's not uh, it, it's not him or her writing it; it's you and you doing the research. But he or she will guide you uh, um, in that. Um, so that's in terms of the the re dissertation, and and to a lesser extent for any essay assessment as well. It's a sort of the same process in in miniature, if you will. Um, and then the other question is is, is class size. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I just... Uh, uh, yeah, talk? yeah, go for it. So um, international tax law is usually our biggest module at about 60 to 70 students. Um, uh, the others are smaller. They range from about 15, 20 to, except for that one, typically 40 odd. Depends on the year. It depends on, on, on things. Um, but it, there will be no, you know, you know, huge lecture theaters with 150 people, right? So... Um, in in most, if not all, of the modules, you will know. You know, you will get a lot of interaction with the teacher. Uh, international tax law, to be honest, is a little bit more difficult because again, that's usually sixty or or so. But, but certainly in all the others, um, they're very open. I think in general, we're we're pretty informal and pretty flexible. Uh, actually, in terms of size, one other thing you should be aware, but I think it's primarily a positive, that some of the modules typically attract non-tax people. So not only do you get the perspective of tax people from some jurisdiction that you knew nothing about, and that includes myself, by the way, that's happened to me too. It happens almost every year. Um, but also from people who actually are not fundamentally tax people. And suddenly you discover that the same issue is dealt with in company law in a different way. Or because they deal with something in company law a certain way, you're then forced into dealing with it in tax in a different way and so on and so forth. So, you know, at the risk of, of sort of overstating the point, you really do get broad perspectives in uh, in the tax element. Brilliant. I think that's a fantastic question uh, to finish on. Um, so thank you so much, Bernard, um, for the very informative uh, webinar. I think it's been really good um, and lots of really good questions there at the end to help answer some questions so thank you very much uh, to you and thank you to everyone uh, for joining wherever you are in the world uh, this session has been recorded so um, it will be shared and um, so if you want to come back um, and check on anything at all you you can do um, and please feel free if you have any questions to just get in touch um, I've popped uh, in the chat a link to all other webinars that we host um, at CCLS. So there's lots of varieties of topics, um, program specific stuff like this, but also more generic um, content, stuff about careers, student panels, um, any information that you'd like. And I've also just put in now the uh, inquiries inbox, which myself and my colleagues uh, look after. So if you've got any other questions at all that you uh, didn't want to ask here today, please feel free to get in touch with us. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much, Bernard, for your time. Thank you, Charlotte. Very much appreciate uh, uh, it. Not at all. Thank you for organizing and 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 hosting. And and thank you. Uh, I can only echo what Charlotte said. Thanks to everyone for participating. And 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 feel free also to to come back to me with any questions you have. Hopefully, and hopefully we'll see um uh, many of you in September. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Have a lovely day. Take bye -bye. care, everyone. Bye.